Alrighty, thanks, Tom. Well, hey, everyone, how's everyone doing? I think the silence is excellent. Um, just a first, first off, a quick introduction of myself. Um, I'm a global application engineering manager at Elkogen. We're, for our industrial thermal management, especially insulation team, where our primary focus is providing innovative heat management solutions to a wide variety of industries. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, am I related to backed engineering and consulting? Unfortunately not, you know, I continuously tell my parents, where's, you know, where's my fifth generation line of uh, family owned company, but it is what it is. So today I'll be focusing on a breakthrough innovation in refractory ceramic fiber insulation and really how that's redefining the efficiency and thermal performance imaginable in petrochemical cracking furnaces. Before I kick that off, you're probably wondering who Elkogen is, so I wanted to do a real short, quick recap. So Elkogen is the combination of two of the world's leading specialty materials companies um, that might ring a bell more familiar, Unifrax and Lidol, to really create one innovation-driven leader focused on battery technology, filtration media, insulation, and sealing materials. With that, our overall mission is to breathe easier, live greener, and go further than ever before. And that's really in line with our vision to become the, the most sought after specialty materials platform focused on human health and sustainability. So with that, a quick overview on what I'll be covering. So first I'm gonna be doing a quick recap on the petrochemical, petrochemical cracking furnaces, the typical insulation linings used today and innovative heat management solutions that have been used in the past. And then the real main focus of the presentation being the high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber that is the new innovation, and then obviously what everyone cares about, the benefits to petrochemical plants. So as I quickly mentioned, I'll first be covering a quick recap on cracking furnaces, heat management solutions, and the typical insulation linings used today. So quick recap on a, a cracking furnace. Well, you don't need the refractory guy to come in here and tell you what a cracking furnace is, but in principle, it's you know the principal furnace used in the petrochemical industry to, to carry out the main stages of production, ethylene production, and it really is, the plant throughput is really highly dependent on the efficiency of the cracking furnace. So what do all the cracking furnaces have in common? Well, they operate at high temperatures and they require immense energy input to carry out production. As you all are familiar with, the American Petroleum Institute, API 560 is a standard for fired heaters for general refinery services. But what you often find for ethylene cracking furnaces, it's not always fitting because of the, the, you know, the heightened operating temperatures and the really harsh conditions that they operate at. So just a quick recap on the, the status of the industry. And you know, like industries worldwide, there's, there's increasing pressures on emission control regulations. You know, there's increasing fuel costs every day here, and you know, every industry worldwide is trying to mitigate their carbon footprint. So really, what is needed? Well, obviously, we need to continue to operate. It's, it's simply not feasible to just cut, you know, cut production that's not economically feasible to be in line with emission control regulations and, and mitigating your carbon footprint. So there really needs to be step change improvements that reduce energy consumption emissions and, and boost efficiencies overall. So heat management solutions, typically, you know, these are considered insulation linings, high temperature insulation linings that are required to safely and efficient, efficiently carry out the cracking process in the radiant sections of a cracking furnace. And the two f real reasons they're there are to minimize heat loss, one, and to protect the casing. So, Minimize heat loss, you know, you want to contain heat in the application and reduce the amount of heat that escapes through the insulation lining itself while, while it's operating. And secondly, protect the casing. Um, obviously, we want to have reduced cold face temperatures at the steel casing side. We're creating a safe working environment for operators nearby, as well as making sure the, the structural integrity of the unit is intact and will have a good service life. Heat management solutions can consist of dense refractory brick, refractory ceramic fiber modules, blanket, micropore solutions, and that's predominantly dependent on where they're being used, the application conditions, design constraints, mechanical abuse, things of that nature. Um, 
But those are all used in heat management solutions in ethylene cracking furnaces. So when you look at the typical insulation lining used today for ethylene cracking furnaces, they're typically composed of refractory ceramic fiber and the radiant walls and arches of, of the unit. And this, this has been the standard predominantly because of its intangible benefits of refractory ceramic fiber being its incredible thermal efficiency. You're able to drop hot face temperatures to, to minimize the lower, the, the cold face temperatures at the steel with a little bit of thickness of insulation. It's thermal shock resistance. It's able to heat up and cool down and shut off rapidly. It's lightweight, has a low heat storage. Resiliency, so you can imagine a, a slinky, it's being resilient at hot and cold temperatures. And then it's also easy to install. So quick, simple, easy to install. So with that, I'm going to introduce the, the new innovation in refractory ceramic fiber being the high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber. I'm going to talk about the enhanced fiber properties that redefine the thermal performance of the material as well as, as, well as provide improved handling and tensile strength characteristics. So just a quick history on RCF. Since the 60s, high temperature insulation wools like RCF have been trusted for their performance, versatility, and handling in a, in a broad spectrum of industries. Some of the high temperature insulating wools have seen innovations and step change improvements over the years, but predominantly for refractory ceramic fiber, it, it's remained the same. It hasn't changed since. And the typical fiberization or manufacturing processes used to create the fiber are either done by blowing or spinning, as you can see. Oh, the pointer's not working. But as you can see in the, the two right images in the top right corner, um, but really a breakthrough innovation has occurred in the manufacturing and fiberization process that creates a refractory ceramic fiber with a higher fiber index and a lower shock content. So the key term to highlight is higher fiber index, and I'll get into that more in detail here. So this slide is showing the enhanced fiber properties. They're showing you uh, the, the microstructure of the high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber versus a, a standard, more traditional refractory ceramic fiber that has been offered since the 60s. So in this slide, I'm, I'm highlighting the shock content, where I'm pointing out the shock content in, in the standard RCF image on the left. And then you can kind of see there's more fiber in higher in, in less shock content on the, the SEM image to the right. So just some visual takeaways by looking at these two images is one, there's more fibers, more fibers pound for pound. Two, lower shock content. So there, there is still shock containing in the product itself, but there's a lower amount. And three, the, the shot that is there, it's smaller on average. And, and when I talk about shot, you, you can imagine, I like to imagine shot as a, a comet. During the fiberization process, you can imagine a, a comet soaring through the sky. The comet itself is the shot. In the, the tail of the comet is the fiber itself. So it's kind of the, uh, the byproduct of fiberization process that's um, not beneficial. So in the last slide, you saw a visual image of the high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber. In this slide, I'm just kind of quantifying it onto a graph to get an idea on the high fiber index. So for those that don't know, the high fiber index is a property that we use in the industry to describe the portion of fiber on sh in shot content by weight percentage. So traditional RCFs and standard RCFs over the years typically fall around 50%, 50 percent, 50 percent fiber to shot. And, th and that really doesn't mean that there's 50% shot particles as there is fiber. It's on a weight basis, and on, on a weight basis, shot is, is heavier than a fiber would be. So as you can see in the graph, the high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber has, has little shot based on weight, and it typically has a fiber index around 65%, so a 15% improvement. So what does that really mean? That means more fiber, and, and how does that benefit us, and how does that how does that align with thermal performance? Well, the characteristics of a high fiber index material makes it a superior insulator. So the innovative fiber makeup in microstructure yields a refractory ceramic fiber with low thermal conductivity values. So when we talk about thermal conductivity, we're, we're talking about 
you know, a material's inherent ability to transfer heat or conduct heat under a steady state temperature gradient. So in the chart here, I've got traditional refractory ceramic fiber blanket on the thermal conductivity graph over a mean temperature range. In blue and then in green, I have the high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber. And this is for an example of two eight pound per cubic foot density blankets. So you can see there's a thermal conductivity improvement with the high fiber index material and at high temperatures that could be anywhere around a 20% lower thermal conductivity values than uh, the traditional RCF blankets. Along with the superior thermal performance, you see a enhancement in handling and tensile strength. So with there being more fiber composed in the refractory ceramic fiber, the high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber, you get a greater interlinking between blanket materials um, upon the needling stages of the manufacturing process. So the needling stage is what creates that, um, you know, great tensile strength and handleability in the refractory ceramic fiber materials, giving them a stronger blanket overall. So you can see the tensile strength graph. Um, you get a benefit there. And then it's also a cleaner refractory ceramic fiber. So there's an improved handling aspect where the lower shock content yields a smoother, softer, cleaner feel. And if you're familiar with installing refractory ceramic fiber, you know it can often be sometimes irritable to the skin, and that's predominantly due to the shot and the dust that's accumulated with that. So with the high fiber index, you're, you yield a cleaner RCF. So lastly here, gonna cover the benefits that you can expect in a petrochemical plant by incorporating this material into your high temperature insulating linings. And the, the major focus is one, reduce energy consumption, reduce cold phase temperatures, and then there's obviously cost savings um, from incorporating it. So here's just a real easy general representation of on the left, you have standard refractory ceramic fiber, and on the right, you have a high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber. Same density blankets, it's a layered blanket lining. You have a hot face condition of 1900 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're running a, a steady state heat flow analysis at a given set of parameters or application conditions. So they're run at the same conditions, same density materials, one's just the high fiber index. And you can see that you're able to minimize the heat loss through the insulation lining by using the high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber. So by minimizing the heat loss, that has a direct correlation with energy savings because you're reducing the amount of energy you need to input into the, the furnace itself in order to operate, and you're losing less through the insulation lining. Inherently then, that also relates to less emissions overall as you're, you're, reduce, you're reducing your energy consumption. The same example can be evaluated for cold face temperatures as well. So you can see here in this particular example that there's a 13 degree temperature drop between the same density materials uh, for the high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber under the same conditions. So you're able to achieve lower cold face temperatures, which ultimately result in safer linings and longer lifetimes. So in general, when it comes to cold face temperatures and, and heat loss, you can expect it's, it's predominantly application dependent on the extent of which you're going to see a ben benefit for, for the difference in the, the high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber and in the standard and typical. But you're always going to see a, a minimization and reduction in cold face temperature and heat loss by incorporating it. Lastly here, cost savings. These can be seen in a handful of, of different ways, predominantly in energy cost savings, raw material cost savings, and installation costs. So it kind of goes without saying, you know, energy, efficient energy usage is critical, and we're seeing worldwide energy costs everywhere. So the reduction in energy consumption generates a, a direct cost savings to the end user. And when it comes to raw materials, this can be seen in cost savings in, in a variety of different ways. Lighter refractory ceramic fiber linings can be used to achieve the same thermal performance as higher density refractory ceramic fiber linings. Thinner lining designs can be used so you're able to achieve the same cold face temperature with less lining thickness. And sometimes you see microporous insulation 
uh, backup boards or solutions being incorporated into cracking furnaces to further reduce the cold face temperature seen at the, the steel lining. And what you can find is by, by doing a full thickness lining of the high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber, in some cases you're actually able to achieve the same thermal performance as you would with a microporous backup solution. As I kind of mentioned earlier in the presentation, you know, no special masonry skills are required with refractory ceramic fiber. So installation's quick, easy, and simple. And in some cases, you, you don't need to, you don't need to um, evaluate doing a board backup solution to further mitigate the, the cold face temperature and reduce the cold face temperature. So with that being said, I just wanted to make a big note that I've put it together a technical paper regarding the benefits specific to an ethylene cracking furnace with a legitimate case study, which is way too in detail to go over in this 20 minute uh, presentation. But I just want to make a note that I know on the last two slides, they were just general layered blanket lining examples just to do a straightforward um, examples there. But in the, in the technical paper, it, it uses a real life ethylene cracking furnace case study example and shows you the benefits you can achieve when it comes to things like reducing cold face temperature, reducing energy consumption, and energy cost savings ultimately as well. So the main takeaways from this presentation that I want you to go home with is there's been an innovation in refractory ceramic fiber. And this is really the high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber that I've been discussing throughout the presentation in that yields superior thermal performance, greater tensile strengths, and a cleaner fiber material overall, which leads to improved handling. Secondly, this can really be incorporated into cracking furnaces and redefine the thermal performance imaginable in these applications. One, by more efficient energy usage, so that really goes hand in hand with minimizing the heat loss, uh, which has a direct correlation with reducing emissions. Three, improved safety, so you have reduction in cold face temperatures, uh, creating safer, safer work environments for operators nearby, and then four, obviously, cost savings in energy, raw materials, and installation. And lastly, so going forward, what's needed to incorporate and start using the high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber? Um, lastly, it's, it's gonna be collaboration, step change improvements, and existing processes and operations are, are dependent on the collaboration with specialty materials leaders that enable customers to reduce fossil fuel consumption, to save energy, and live, live greener. So with that, I, you know, most people like to leave it off on thank you, any questions, but uh, a funny story I had when I first started my first job as a co-op engineer, I was my first week and my boss pulled me in to a presentation and he's like, you know what? People only really understand the first and last slide of the presentation. That's all they remember. So with that, I just want you to go home and really have in, in, instilled in your mind high fiber index refractory ceramic fiber, because that's truly the innovation here that I wanted to cover. And if there's anything you want to take away from the presentation, it would, it would be that. And just kidding. Thank you. Any questions? I'd be happy to answer. But thanks, everyone.